This video shows you how to use Excel to dynamically calculate year-to-date and financial year-to-date total given your choice of reference point in time. It is a third of a five-part tutorial that helps you work smart by guiding you on how to set up an automated template. You can download the template at the link below. We promise that it will save you a lot of time and pain in the long run as you frequently update your reports. Today's goal? We build on what we've set up in the previous two tutorials to dynamically calculate year-to-date and financial year-to-date total sales based on your choice of reference point in time. For example, you could set the latest date to 2009-08 and get year-to-date total figures calculated as of August 2009. In the very next instance, you could change the reference date to 2008-11 to get year-to-date total figures recalculated as of November 2008. This gives you the flexibility to go back and forth in time to see how the figures have changed instead of switching between multiple versions of the same file saved at different times. In this video, we tweaked the combination of Excel formula we wrote in part 2 for last 12 months total so we can automatically calculate year-to-date total sales. With a bit more tweaking, we can also get financial year-to-date totals. Then, with a little adjustment, we can get year-to-date and financial year-to-date of the previous year as well. This will be useful when you need to get a sense of how you are doing compared to a like-for-like -like time period last year on a cumulative basis. Before we begin, let's choose our reference date to base our calculations on. For example, we select 2008-06 from the drop-down list in cell G3 to set the reference date to June 2008. We start by tweaking the last 12 months total formula to get year-to-date total. This was the combo formula at the end of part 2. Leaving everything intact, we are only going to tweak the last part, which is the with in the offset formula. The width here sets the relevant range of columns to be included depending on your choice of reference date. In this case, we want to get the range of columns that span 2008-06 and 2008-01, which is the start of the year. So we are going to make use of the formula we previously wrote for last 12 months and tweak it for year to date. We want to look at the position of cell G4 2008-01 within the horizontal range J8 to AT8. Then we find the position of cell G3's 200806 within the same horizontal range. The difference between the two returns a minus 5. This sets the width to be 5 columns starting from the anchor column itself, currently at 200806, and goes left until 200802. You need to put a minus 1 at the end of it to include the first month of the calendar year itself. Let's check if our formula is working right. Select the cells W9 to AB9 and take note of the sum here. It says 359. Take a look at cell E9 and hey, it also reads 359. To test if the dynamic date reference is working, change your latest date in cell G3 to 200904. This time, select cells AI9 to AL9. Take note the sum is 378 and check that it's also reflected in cell E9. With year-to-date total done, we just need a little tweak to get financial year-to-date total. This is useful for companies whose financial years do not run from January to December. Instead of finding the number of columns that span the selected reference date and the start of the calendar year, we want to switch out the start of the calendar year to be the start of the financial year. Making use of the formula we previously wrote for year to date, we'll just replace the reference cell G4 with G5 so that it corresponds to the start of the financial year. Test that the dynamic calculations are working correctly by selecting another date reference. Finally, let's take a look at calculating the previous year's year-to-date, financial year-to-date, and their respective year-on-year. -year. Why do we bother? Well, typically we won't stop at just knowing year-to-date for the current year. What context do we have to assess 
if the figures for current year-to-date are looking good. One benchmark is to compare it with the previous year's year-to-date up to this same point in time. Not only do we compare them on an absolute basis, we also calculate their year-on-year -year growth. Instead of having the formula take reference to this year's dates, we want to point it to last year's like-for-like -like period. Making use of the formula we previously wrote for current year to date, we'll switch out the references to this year with last year's references by replacing instances of column G with H. Now that you've set this up, your figures will be automatically updated whenever you add new raw data or select a different reference date. While this automated set is pretty cool, you might be secretly wishing for an easier way. And the thing is, there is a more efficient way. In parts 4 and 5 of this 5-part tutorial, we will introduce you the power series way, after you get acquainted with the super powerful yet hidden in plain sight add-ins, aka Power Query and Power Pivot, we promise your Excel life will never be the same again. So go on to part 4 and get ready to take the red pill.